Hello everyone, it is time once again for Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We are in Jeremiah chapter 4, and we pick up our study in verse 15. Grab your Bible, open it up to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 15. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is something that you really need to know about if you don't already. Because the most important thing in this world is the Word of God. And the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at thebibleversebyverse.com is a place where you can study the Bible in its entirety, twice through, completely, using my audio Bible commentaries. It's a verse by verse study, not a chapter by chapter or even a paragraph by paragraph. And so check it out at thebibleversebyverse.com. But wait until after the program, if you can, because we're going to be going through the book of Jeremiah again today. Chapter 4, as I said, verse 15, in this, our third journey through the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jeremiah, faithful, very faithful prophet of God. I think, I think uh, if he's not my favorite Old Testament Bible character, then I don't know who would be. He preached his heart out when it wasn't popular, and he spoke the truth, and he suffered, but he continued because he was dedicated to God. So let's begin in verse 15, actually. It says, For a voice declareth from Dan, and publisheth affliction from Mount Ephraim. Make ye mention to the nations. Behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field are they against her round about, because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. Thy way and thy doings have procur procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reacheth unto thine heart. It's deep down in the farthest recesses of your soul. It's ingrained in you. And we learn from this that when calamity strikes a sinner, it is their own fault. When one chooses the path of sin, they must accept the consequences of calamity. 19. My heart, my heart, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace, because thou hast heard. O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried. For the whole land is despoiled. Suddenly are my tents despoiled, and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard, and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. They're real skilled at doing what is bad. Oh, they're, they're proficient in their sin. And Jeremiah cries. He cries because his people are so foolish and so evil. And he cries because of the punishment that they're going to suffer as a result of that. 
and none of it had to be. It was all such a big waste. 23. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. That's, that's what uh, the original form of creation was here. When God made the heavens and the earth, it was like that. It wasn't made to stay like that. But it's interesting that God judges and he describes his judging as a reversal of creation. Let's continue on, see what else he says in verse 24. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heaven had fled. So it really was like a reversal of creation. When God created everything, he improved the original state of creation. When he judges man, he reverses that order. Verse 26, I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. You can read about that in the book of Revelation. He just demolishes the whole planet because of their sin. 27, for thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, Yet will I not make a full end. He's going to preserve just a slice of his people and a slice of their land. For this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it. I have purposed it and will not repent. Neither will I turn back from it. God's judgment is described, as I said, as a reversal of creation. It'll be from cosmos to chaos, from beauty to destruction. 29. The whole city shall flee for the noise of the horsemen and bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb up upon the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken and not a man dwell therein. And when thou art spo despoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rendest thy face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair, thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail, and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion that bewaileth herself, that spreadeth her hands, saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is wearied because of murderers. So some in Israel are going to run and they're going to hide from the attacking army, which is God's wrath against them. Others, foolishly, are going to put on makeup and try to get on the good side of the enemy. But nothing will work. This is God's judgment. And nothing works when it's God's judgment. It will run its course. Chapter 5. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now and know. Listen to what God says. Jeremiah. And seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it, and though they say, the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Don't be fooled, Jeremiah, by pious talk. Just go looking. 
Find one man, one single person who's righteous, and I'll spare the whole works. But don't let them kid you. Don't let them put on a pious face. You got to look down and watch their fruit. You got to see how they behave. You got to pay attention to the slips of the tongue because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Watch them and listen to them when their guard is down. And discern what's really in their soul. Three, O oh Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Just more the same, you know? And anyone who would suggest that God is quick to punish in the Old Testament, anytime I hear something like that, I know that person is parroting what somebody else has said who also didn't know what they were talking about because it's simply not true. You ought to read these verses very carefully. Pay close attention to them because God would have spared, as he said, he would have spared his people if Jeremiah could have just found one person among them who treated others right and sought truth that Jeremiah couldn't even find one person like that God's not asking much is he he's asking for a lot less than what he deserves he is so gracious thankfully chapter 5 verse 4 Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. Yeah, they're low class, Jeremiah says. That's why I couldn't find anybody. For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. They're uneducated. You know, that is kind of backwards. That's why I couldn't find anybody among them that was good. So he has a brainstorm here in verse 5. I will get me unto the great men, and I will speak unto them. I'll go to the classy people. Enough of this blue-collar stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look at the white-collar community. I'm going to speak to them. I'm going to check them out. For they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Eh? They may have known the word of God more than the poor people who, who were unlearned but didn't do many good. They just turned their back on it. So, verse 6, Therefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evenings shall despoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. Jeremiah thought, he really did, there has to be someone good somewhere. It just has to be. And as I said, he knew the blue collar people were bad, but maybe he would have better luck among the leaders, you know, the upper class people. And again, he did not. Everyone was bad. Everyone would therefore be punished. Verse 7. How shall I pardon thee for this? No, ma no matter how badly God wants to pardon sin. His justice ties his hands to mercy when people refuse to repent. H how can I pardon you for this? He goes on to say, Thy children have forsaken me. I can't pardon somebody who has forsaken me and won't turn back. Can't do it. Can't. And sworn by them that are no gods. 
They've gone completely in the opposite direction of God. There's, there's no mercy for people like that. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery. He took care of his people the best that any God possibly could have and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's houses. They just went off the deep end when it came to sin. They won't stop. Verse 8. They were as fed horses in the morning. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. Lustful. Any woman they could get, man, they just took her. And women were just as bad. You say, yeah, well, that's, that's a modern sexual revolution. That's the new morality. No, that's filthy, vile, disgusting sin. It's immorality. And it will be judged. It's fornication. It's uncleanness. It's homosexuality. It's adultery. It's sin. There's nothing new about it. And there are no excuses. And God hates it all. And he will punish if you're involved in that kind of lifestyle. Unless you repent and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Verse 9. Shall I not visit for these things? And it's not going to be a friendly visit. Saith the Lord. And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? God describes the depravity of his people. And then he asks two rhetorical questions. Why should I forgive them? And why shouldn't I punish them? Verse 10. Go ye up upon her walls and destroy. But make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. God didn't have anything to do with Israel. 11. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They don't like me. They hate me. They do things constantly to offend me. So I will not protect them. You don't have to have God rule over you. But just don't expect his protection. Don't expect it today. And you better not be counting on it for judgment day. Verse 11. Actually verse 12. They have beliled the Lord and said, It is not he. Neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see sword or famine. Psh, yeah the judgment of God yeah it's a bunch of hot air yeah that used to happen back in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah but man we're, we're a modern society yeah those warnings of judgment that's just that's just a bunch of hot air by old-fashioned preachers who haven't who haven't come into the uh, 21st century or whatever century it was when Jeremiah was there Their preaching isn't going to amount to a hill of beans. Notice what they say. 13. And the prophets shall become wind, and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. They're not preaching. They say they're preaching the word of God, just like people today say the Bible is the word of God. And they tell us to stop sinning, and they point out things that we're doing that are sinful that's not the word of God and we don't have anything to worry about oh really really well let's just read on to verse 14 therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts because ye speak this word because that's your attitude behold I will make my words in thy mouth fire Jeremiah and this people would and it shall devour them I'll never get rich preaching the word of God I'll never have a lot of nice things preaching the word of God because it's not a popular message but I know this when I proclaim the word of God without apology without compromise it goes forth like fire and those who refuse to repent at the sound of God's word are like dry wood they will burn 
I don't care what the majority of people say. I don't care what the majority of churches so-called teach. It doesn't matter. That's the way it is. And someday they will find out. That's what God is saying about Jeremiah. Why? Because he was an Old Testament prophet? No, because he spoke the pure word of God. That's why. That's the only thing that matters. And that matters of any one in any age that's the important thing that's the thing that must be respected 15 he says I will lo I will bring a nation upon you from far, from afar O house of Israel saith the Lord it is a mighty nation it is an ancient nation a nation whose language thou knowest not neither understandest what they say they're going to invade your borders and they're going to talk and you're not even able to understand them you just don't know that it's not good. 16, their quiver is, a, is as an open sepulcher. They're all mighty men, a lot tougher than you guys. 17, and they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They're going to take what you work for, and they're going to steal it, and I'm going to be backing them 100% because this is my judgment. You work and you work. And you don't enjoy the fruits of your labor. Why do you think that is? They shall eat up thy flocks and thy herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fortified cities wherein thou trusted with the sword. You, th you thought you were so advanced? You thought you had so many barriers set up between you and the wrath of God? You thought you were so ingenious in these barriers that you put up to guard yourself against judgment from God because of your sin they're going to all crumble Eighteen. nevertheless in those days saith the Lord I will not make a full end with you you know how many times does he say this he always leaves a remnant and it shall come to pass when ye shall say why doth the Lord God Lord our God all these things unto us and I, I would like to know why you're asking why why you think because he's warned you for decades against your sin and now you're surprised why is God doing this to us well, I don't know measure your life by the word of God how's it line up not too good huh that explains it then thou shalt answer them. When, when they say, why is God doing this to us? Then answer them. As ye have forsaken me, as you have forsaken God, and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. You wanted their gods. You wanted the lifestyle of the heathen. Now you're going to live in the land of the heathen, and you're going to be their slaves. And I'm kicking you out of this glorious land that I gave you. You want to be like them? You want to behave like them? You're going to live with them. And it's not going to be any fun. 20. Actually, let's stop right there. For a second. You know, we, we read these last few verses. And it's clear that most of God's people didn't think that God would punish them. And most of the so-called prophets said that he wouldn't. But Jeremiah spoke the truth. They served the false gods of the heathen, so they're going to be scattered among the heathen. And God's warnings through Jeremiah will come to pass. Instead of the promises of wealth and health and prosperity that the liars were preaching, so that they could be popular, that's not coming to pass. You're going to be coming up empty, if that's what you're looking for. Verse 20. Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, 
O foolish people, and without understanding, who have eyes and see not, who have ears and hear not, fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence, who have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over? You don't fear me? I control the ocean waves? I set the boundaries, and you are so stupid, so foolish, that you don't fear me? Well, 23, but this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They have revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, who giveth rain, both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withheld good things from you. God's people knew the truth. They just, of their own free will, turned their backs on it. They had eyes, but they did not see because they didn't want to see. They didn't learn. They didn't understand because they didn't want to learn, and they didn't want to under. They were totally satisfied and content in their sin. 26. For among my people are found wicked men, they lie in wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap. They catch men as a cage is full of birds. So are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they have become great and have waxed rich. They have waxed fat. They shine. Yea, they surpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge? Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? An astonishing and horrible thing is committed in the land. Look at this. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? The preachers preach lies, and the people loved it. They flocked to them. They gave them their offerings. They supported their churches, as it were. And everybody was happy, and everyone was content. The preachers who wouldn't preach against sin were very popular. They had the mega churches, as it were. They received the big offerings. They made the people feel comfortable in their sin, because they never mentioned sin. Oh. We have a positive ministry. Yeah, you dirty, rotten, filthy, vile sinner. They made the people feel comfortable in their sin. But that didn't erase the guilt of their sin. So the people would be damned in the end. They loved their sin. And the prophets prophesied lies to make them feel comfortable in their sin. And that added up to trouble and damnation for the Israelites. And that's what's going to happen today, too. You see these good time preachers? They're a dime a dozen now on television. In fact, the major Christian networks are filled with them. That's all there are. Health and wealth, for the most part. Telling people what they want to hear. And most of the people get sucked into them. Not all, but most of them are, are women. And that's what the Bible says will happen. But not just women, it's men who are greedy. The liars offer health and wealth and prosperity. And they say things like, oh, God wants you to be successful. God wants you to be a winner. Never a mention about sin. Never a mention about repentance. But it's all over in the Word of God. Now, you want to study Word of God further? And I hope you do. You can do it at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. Check it out, the Scripture Verse by Verse website, found at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. Click on the book you want to study, click on the chapter, open your Bible, follow along, and listen and study with me using my audio Bible commentaries. Once again, that's found at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. And if the Word of God is a blessing to you, I pray and would ask that you would prayerfully consider blessing us back. Your prayers and financial support are greatly appreciated. 
you can give. Just click on the donate button at the front page of the BibleVerseByVerse.com and give as the Lord may lead. I'll see you next time. Until then, so long, everyone.